but in long run, I think probably Square Cash will take in care of you know, these you know issue here because you know they already started the Bitcoin you know, buying services on the Square Cash and wallet services. And I think you know they will since like they have a lot of like a local merchant on a square like you know the merchant network. And I think probably they're gonna start in about the lending service of local merchant with the collateralization of the Bitcoin. Hi, hello, I'm a Mr. Masa. So this is an investment review for the uh, Crypto.com token name is CRO. So the Crypto.com is one of the uh, key players that which focus on the you know retail payment market in the blockchain and crypto space. So uh, since like you know in long term, like you know, how we can use the Bitcoin or any other like you know, we can use a daily use in our life, such as a local store, or, like an you know, online shopping or something. And so you know this plot is kind of you know worth to think about it about the future of the retail payment industry in the blockchain space still. So uh, let's start, okay? So as usual, based on my portfolio strategy, the uh, crypto.com is you know categorizing number one, DApps layer, but also since providing DEX services here, also provide a couple of like collateralized you know, lending or like, you know, collateralized DeFi services still. So I, I'm categorizing these number three and four here, okay? And I use, as usual, I you know this is in the six you know Anatka points starting from the pain points, product, team, execution power, token economy, and hype cycle, right? And then they start for the number one pain point. And then they're you know focus on pain points very, very you know simple. So user cannot use crypto you know, currency or for online payments or local shops. So let me you know tell you why. So you know we want to use cryptocurrency actually not only the bitcoin but also the other like in altcoins online payments of the local shops like in visa and master so currently when you look at the visa and the master you can use in you know, almost everywhere in the world including offline online you know online shopping or the offline restaurant or local daily store or something right but in crypto assets such as some of the actually similar to the very stable coin stuff too. It's kind of a very local currency, but you can we can use you know these in cryptocurrency or crypto assets in our daily life or in a payment transaction stuff. Some of like you know local merchant accept the Bitcoin, but you know compared with like you know the Bitcoin masters like a local number of the you know, merchant, which actually they already cover like an you know, over forty million you know. The merchant in a global basis stuff, the local number of the you know, local merchant or online shopping and you can use the Bitcoin is very, very still limited, right? So from that perspective, how we're gonna you know make this happen, especially with mass adaptation for the retail payment market, is very, very critical for the entire like long-term like success of the entire crypto and blockchain industry. Okay. And for reference, and this is kind of what to know about, you know, the potential of the crypto.com is first of all, this is like, you know, I know the data from the uh, Nielsen reports about the you know, mobile and the retail payment market. And the first number that you should worth to know is actually this number. So the total, you know, digital payment, mainly, you know, led by you know, Visa or Master is the market in the size in 2014 is around like you know, 200 billion. And a really, really big market here. But it also like news, you know, it's still 2014 and you know, you know, a little bit old number. So, you know, it's already like, you know, 25 and 250 in a video market or so will be currently exist in a retail payment market. So it's a pretty big market potential here. And the second thing you should you know, pay attention to here. So currently we have a three major methodology for the digital payments. One is about the you know, credit card payments, you know, like a later payment model. And as a second one is debit payment model. So immediately we zero the, you know, the ask, I know, your money from your bank account or something. And the third one is the prepaid market. And then prepaid market is a relatively new market, but you know, think of the growth rate is the biggest one here. 200% in annual basis compared with like in a few, around 50% in a credit card and debit market. So, you know, actually CryptoBookCom will also fo focus on this area, prepaid market. It's kind of in a good, in a pro I know, go to market strategy to focus on, you know, crypto payment transaction because it's most of the fastest growing market in the world, right? For the photo product analysis that the uh, I pick up the, uh, you know, kind of related to, you know, related to competitor here, like in the side of Visa, this is a mass item. Also the PayPal, they have in a Venmo, it's kind of you know, P2P, like in the bill splitting services and quite popular in the younger generations. And the Square Cash, the Square Cash is also kind of similar product with the Venmo. 
and you know, Coinbase, it's a centralized exchange, and Binance, it's also a centralized exchange, but they taking a couple of like a token economy, so it's worse to compare with the crypto.com. And as you know that, you know, when you look at the you know, pay payment for the online and offline stuff, of course, Visa is the biggest player, biggest competitor, and very, very powerful. And also the PayPal or Square Cash also, you know, doing pretty good work on here. So it's not a good idea to directly compete with them, right? Compete with this player in the payment offline stuff too. And the second, the bill speed. So bill speed is kind of very popular in younger generation stuff too, especially like in the center of Venmo and Square Cash is very popular. And Visa doesn't cover these areas. And it is like in crypto player like in Coinbase or, you know, or Square, uh, the Binance doesn't care about those kind of issues because it's related to le retail payment stuff, right? But when you look at the you know, crypto asset exchange, of course, like in Coinbase, Binance is a pretty strong player, but also crypto and dotcom also, you know, try to compete in these areas still. And also the crypto asset lending and crowd intelligence and stuff. Also the Coinbase and Binance are pretty good player, but the most importantly, you know, the Visa, PayPal, Square doesn't support those areas. Okay. But in long run, I think probably Square Cash will take in care of you know, these you know, issue here because you know, they already started the Bitcoin you know, buying services on the Square Cash and wallet services. And I think you know, they will, since like they have a lot of like a local merchant on a Square, like you know, the merchant network. And I think probably they're going to start in about the lending services, local merchant with the collateralization of the Bitcoin. So the consumer deposits their like a Bitcoin in a Square Cash wallet and then they can lend this Bitcoin to local merchant. And then things like Square is extremely successful with their transaction lending services, local merchant staff too. So I think they probably start in these areas too in, in the future. So they will be, you know, on a computer in these areas. So from this perspective, actually, you know, crypto.com should, should differentiate the service in these areas will be critical, okay? And also the token economy. So, you know, only here about Binance can, you know, is running the you know, token economy with the BNB token. Other player doesn't have any kind of these functionalities. So that's one of the critical edges that the crypto.com can differentiate from the others. So, you know, key point is these three categories, you know, crypto asset exchange, crypto asset lending, collateralization, and token economy. So these are the three categories with the very, very critical key driver for them, especially the product strategy perspective to compete with a you know, massive, like a big player, you know, take Gigan area in the retail payment market, like in Visa, PayPal, or Square Cash, okay? And then, uh, since like they cover like you know a variety of like you know, services in one product, so you may assume that since they provide payment services too, you may assume that the you know, UI a little bit can complicate itself something. But I think you know, they have looks like they have pretty good like UX and UI designer, and they are very very simply integrate their services in one applications. So you know this is like you know my key you know, I know UI example of the crypto.com. So they're starting from this is a homepage. So you can check like, you know, how much, you know, assets you're gonna have in this on each, you know, the token stuff like in a crypto.com MCO token or, you know, Lipo token or, you know, Ethereum or Bitcoin, something like this way. And also you can sell and buy immediately. Also you can send a P2P and you know, sending each other with the, you know, with your friends still. And when you, you know, click the uh, card services, they provide, you know, Visa based prepared card services inside their wallet. And with the actual physical card. And they also have a kind of special loyalty program inside. So it's kind of very consumer oriented services inside. So that's what I'm gonna assume that they're pretty good at like in you know, a consumer retail card business. It is too. For example, like you know, they're gonna pay back your Spotify and networks and Spotify or Netflix, also like including like an Expedia.com or like ABDB stuff too. They can, you know, and refund those kind of fee for the you know space like you know the royal you know card user too. Those are the one of the uniqueness point of the crypto.com too. Okay. And then you know third one is that also they have an exchange and a functionality here. So you can track about you know your the current price of the each crypto assets just like in Binance and Coinbase stuff too. And then you can buy or sell these crypto assets. Okay. So, you know, simply, you know, they kind of a purely consumer, you know, payment integrated products with the exchange services or lending services. This is you know, their application stuff too. So in a crypto space, kind of, you know, relatively unique one in the space because most of the, you know, those kind of consumer players are focused on like, you know, exchange services such as Binance or Coinbase, okay? All right, so the next one, the CRO token. So they're also building the decentralized payment network in long term, you know, to compete with the Visa network. And then this, you know, approach is, you know, kind of very, you know, well sought out model with the CRO token economy stuff. So let's, you know, kind of review it. It's kind of worth to know. So they, you know, categorize mainly four nodes 
on their payment entire network, starting from the council node. So the council node is just like a validator in the Cosmos network, so it's kind of permission blockchain based one. And they are the most critical node player in this ecosystem because they you know, only run any kind of you know, transaction stuff and they're going to verify them. So all the transaction, you know, from the old transaction coming from outside here, 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 and a council node in the process and verify all the transaction is you know absolutely true. Okay, so the you know, council nodes are play a very critical player. Okay, and the second one is an you know, acquire node. So like acquire node is set on the behalf of the merchant and consumer, which means that you know, they're taking care of the, you know my retail payment transactions. You know when you go to the restaurant and using like you know a Bitcoin for your payment for you know buying like some pasta or pizza or something and you're gonna pay in a bitcoin with it and it's those kind of you know crypto assets based payment transactions handled by an acquired node and a settlement node settlement agent node so settlement agent is provided the price stability and a, you know fiat payout for the merchant so this is kind of one of the critical you know you know player here in the node because you know all the merchant are usually running by in a fiat currency based model so be, because you know once even they can accept the bitcoin payment from the consumer but you know they they need the cash like us dollar or euro something because you know they need to you know purchase as like you know item such as the water or some kind of meat or some kind of vegetable from other player too that they need the cash so you know this you know, settlement agent no taking care of those kind of you know, you know crypto to fiat payment transaction stuff for the liquidation for the merchant side okay and then in the fourth one community node so community node is you know customer or merchant who settle for the, you know themselves you know, directly without going to the through the you know, acquirers so which means that I mean, it's purely p2p transaction so p2p money sending model too so the council node is located here and the community node is located here and here, or the customer sites and acquirer sites, and also acquired nodes is located here. So the things they were thinking about, like you know, they, all the transaction is you know happening a local based one, like you know P2P and transferring mode and consumer sites happening in the community node, or community node here and acquirer side too. Also like you know consumer to acquirer payment transaction happening to these like an acquirer nodes area too, but. The finality of the each transaction would happen, you know, with the council node, just like in a Cosmos and you know, validated network too. So they're gonna take, in, so they are trying to build this kind of remote distributed payment transaction network, I know, to replace the current kind of, you know, Visa model too. All right, so that's what we're thinking about. And then all the like, transaction model is happening here that each node can get incentives with a CRO token, just like you know, the Ethereum verifications or you know. And the Cosmos Atom verifications are the same things that are happening about you know, this model too. Then also like you know multiple pre uh, prepaid cards with you know MC MCO too because you know I, as I said like one of the uniqueness compared with other crypto player like in Coinbase or in Binance you know the crypto.com's uniqueness player they have you know very very you know consumer oriented you know card service here and uh, this is actually a prepaid one because uh, this is all the things that happen in the crypto space uh, crypto based one okay so because uh, so for example like you know you have like in their card and a wallet and applications so you're gonna charge like BTC Bitcoin and then. Uh, you can use this Bitcoin in a payment transaction visa, but actually this is kind of prepaid on a, on a prepaid model here. So you're gonna charge the fiat money by using your Bitcoin. So they're gonna, you know, that system liquidated some like a Bitcoin and it charged like a hundred dollar, two hundred dollars or something with you know, the current price of the Bitcoin. And then you can use this, you know, prepaid visa card with this, you know, inside of their application stuff. Okay, so it's not the purely the payment, you know, the crypto asset based payment transaction yet, but in long term, they will happen. Okay, once I acquire, they are a little bit in you know, a match on network, like just like a visa. Okay, and as I said, like they have unique small, uniqueness point is like, you know, they have like, you know, five type of the card here and a premium here, the you know, basic one here. And for the premium, so for example, they have like, you know, Spotify for free. Netflix for free or Expedia for a 10% discount, Airbnb for 10% discount or bank with zero, also like, you know, some kind of you know, fee discount here too. So those are, they provide a very range of consumer oriented services here. Okay. So that's one of the, you know, know unique point of their products. And then for team analysis, crypto.com, I pick up the six, you know, key member here. And they started from the Chris, he's a co-founder CEO and he, you know, before join and uh, before started his, you know, this project, he was the ex CEO of the Ensogo, which is the number one online discount retailer in the SEA located in Hong Kong. 
And he was also the serial, te uh, serial tech entrepreneur because he was also the, before the you know, Enso, he was co-founder and ex-CEO of you know, VCrazy, which is actually acquired by the Enso Go in 2014. Okay, so he's a you know, serial entrepreneur. And Gary is a co-founder and they used to work together because you know, he's kind of, you know, kind of the CTO role and he's an ex-platform architect at the Be Crazy, okay? And although he also you know, got the BS degree of the computer science at the University of the Hong Kong. So he's a very, very tech savvy guy. Looks like he's kind of a tech geek guy. And Eric, side guy, the COO. So he's the ex-senior manager for the global strategy APAC at PayPal. So very familiar with the payment model. And before that, he was also the engagement manager at the McKinsey, kind of project manager in a consulting firm, and an analyst at the Goldman Sachs. So you know, as you can see, he's very, very familiar with the payment industry. So these also players, especially from the retail, like in the payment market, including e-commerce stuff too. So you know, very familiar with the payment industry here. And Jason, first guy, CISO, it's actually related to security positions. So he's an ex cyber security advisor for the Microsoft, also the you know, executive vice president and CSO at the uh, chief security officer at the Asian Software, which is a security consulting, uh, consulting company for the uh, Fortune 500 companies. So he's a kind of expert about you know, the payment and the security network because you know, you know, actually that's what's enough for you guys. So in the security industry, uh, no, the retail payment industry, especially like in Visa or Buster, they have their own like, you know, standardized you know, security protocol or like, you know, policy to you know, you know, build and then maintaining those kind of payment pay network. PCD ISS is one of very, very famous, well-known security standard of retail payment market. And he also specializes in security standards still. Go, and when you go into like a payment, retail payment industry to you know, work with the merchant, like a restaurant or online shopping or something, you know, PCD ISS is one of the critical requirements for the merchant side to protect the you know, payment transaction in one secure way. So, you know, the Crypto.com payment infrastructure have to, you know, you know follow up, you know, up, they have to apply the security standard. And then he knows well, so he's the right guy to join this team. And then, you know, fifth side, the Brent is a senior vice president in global expansions and he's an ex, you know, prepaid partner solution of the APAC CIS is Russia, the Middle East and Africa at the Visa. So he's, he's a completely perfect guy to taking care of the business development for the, you know, Crypto.com because as I said in the previous slide, especially product one, as a you know, prepaid card market is the fastest growing market in a you know digital payment industry right now. Okay, and the Visa is the you know, biggest player there. So he knows the many thing about the, you know, what kind of things they have to take care of it to build the, you know, a massive margin network for this in Crypto.com too. So he's a completely right guy to take care of you. And there's this guy. You know, Aaron, you know, Aaron you know, he's you know, taking care of data analytics staff and he's an ex the junior trader at the uh, derivative product at the Rikid Capital, Rikid Capital Pro, and so he's a BC of the finance at the University of the New South Wales. So but he's a completely finance guy. And actually we need those kind of talents, you know, for the crypto call because he run, they're running a you know, crypto exchange. So if you are not familiar with it, please check the you know. And my analysis for the Binance or Kaiba Networks or Xerox Protocol, those are the next player here. On all these company blockchain project hire these you know, specialists taking care of the trading stuff or algorithm development, development or like an you know, order matching stuff. You know, but you know, my look at the team balance here is a kind of little too much way on the payment right now. Of course, you know, very very necessary to build this kind of team and you know, taking care of like those kind of you know. A security player or like you know, an ability for the payment industry staff too but at the same time since they have to build a massive user base so i think you know, they need more like you know, you know strong talents specialists taking care of the exchange business that's my you know, kind of review for this team member okay for the payments great yeah. analysis so based on the team member let's review their extension power so uh they founded the project in 2016 june and in 2018, May, so they're going to release their first you know, Crypto.com app and it used to be actually the MCO, Monaco and Applications, with the Visa prepaid card services. And then 2019, December, so they're going to release it to over 200 you know, crypto assets from their you know, DEX system. Okay? Then, uh, now, as far as I researched there you know, on that web, so it looks like the total application download number at this moment is over 100 million as of now. They, the things, as I said before, so you know, they want to go into the payment market just like Visa to compete with Visa Master.
But you know, to acquire the merchant, actually they need a user base. So here's a kind of like chicken egg problem here. So they have to solve it. All the things coming from like, you know, I know supply side problem or you know merchant side, but merchant also wants to you know access to the you know massive user base. So from this perspective, actually they have standing from the consumer side. Because for the, to develop the active user base on the consumer side, we already have a solution for this. It's in crypto exchange. Dex is fine too. So, you know, from this perspective, you know, why they're already running their product over like three or four years, but still they're a little bit struggling to like building, you know, critical achievement or tractions on their project is, you know, they too much focus on the payment industry. So they have a little bit, you know, do the tricky model like Binance. So they're going to build the massive, Binance build the massive user base in the crypto exchange space. So actually leverage those active user base, they can get, get into the payment industry, payment market in time they want. So crypto.com you know, finally recognize, you know, these, you know, uh, critical necessity for them to, you know, go into the payment industry in long term. So, uh, ma, I know kind of a transitional moment for them to build an actual achievement on their product. So, as I said, so uh, this is related to DAP's project. Ma, of course, they are related to you know, DeFi or Dex area, but you know, since you know, ma, one of the most critical focusing point for them is in retail payment industry, retail payment layer. So that is why you know I especially focus on DAP's layer to analyze crypto.com. Okay. And for the DApps project, the most important item that we carefully analyze is network effects. Okay, so that is why I focus on this one. And for the network effects on the CRO, uh, this is my analysis, and, it's, and the startup points here. So they have to build in a you know, massive consumer active user base to get into acquire the local merchant. So currently, you know, one of the strengths is a large discount for the buying crypto assets with the CRO staking on a wallet app. For example, like, you know, they're going to provide a 20% discount on BTC purchase or like 50% you know, discount for the you know, Atom purchase or something. So they're running, continuously running those kind of like, you know, user acquisition marketing campaign. And then those users, and then with the actual required CRO staking model staff too. So those user who wants to use, you know, the crypto applications, with this campaign, get into the you know, you know, exchange services. So they're gonna generate you know, specific like user traffic here. And then once they're gonna you know, you know, get the user here, the next step is that they have to you know, increase their liquidity. So they're gonna run like a trading campaign, like you know, trading fee discounts, or uh, trading, uh, trading you know, uh, some kind of reward program or something, just you know, Binance you know, currently you know, doing all the time, right? So they're gonna apply a lot of Binance like marketing campaign to increase the liquidity on for their you know, crypto as a crypto exchange, right? And then once they're gonna achieve this, you know, liquidity growth, you know, they can you know provide better customer experiences, so they can generate more you know, user traffic here because you know user all the time wants to you know prefer the you know, massive liquidity for the payment and you know, selling and buying of selling transactional stuff there. So these generate their you know active user growth here, but. Since they want to focus on you know, payment industry in long term, so the next step they have to think about the margin growth here, okay? And for the margin growth, you know, they have, they're gonna leverage this active user base here, then they can move it to here. So they, you know, for the first step of the margin equation is, you know, they already provide you know, a couple of the economic benefits for the margin. For example, the margin as a validator, you know, can get the incentives for the CRO, for the, you know, each tran payment transaction validation stuff too. And also like a lower payment fee compared with a Visa and Master. So currently they're gonna charge a 0.5% margin fee with the you know, crypto.com payment network. And in a Visa and Master, they're gonna usually 2.0% you know, or something on average in a global basis stuff. So this is one of like, you know, their competitive edge point to acquire local merchant. But of course they need a local you know, active user base first, okay? So with these combinations, they can you know achieve like a margin growth here by leveraging you know these two items. Then once you know they build like a margin you know more massive margin availability for the user, they can for the user perspective they can get more better customer experiences. That is why they can get more user traffic here. So you know currently these you know active user growth spiral mechanism stuff, also the growth you know margin and margin growth mechanism stuff, they are correlated to each other. But the critical starting point is here. 
Otherwise, you know, they're not be they're not gonna be crypto.com not gonna be successful to be a payment player in a crypto you know, crypto assets and Bitcoin blockchain space. Then about the token economy, the most one of the critical item in long term is governance DAO, and it should be later because you know they currently the most important things they have to focus on you know growth. That is why. Okay. And then as usual about you know, hype cycle analysis, it's got no hype cycle analysis for the blockchain 2019 version. And then where the location of the uh, crypto.com is here. So blockchain based ACH payments. So ACH payments is, you know, auto uh, autonomic and creating house, you know, payment transaction model, which is more decentralized distributed fashion model. And then they try to apply the blockchain technology here to achieve more, you know, the massive scale of the decentralization model here. And then, so that is why they, so the Sierra.com is purely directly focused on this kind of decentralized payment network to compete with Visa or banking transfer staff, so it's located here, okay? And the timing is kind of good, but still a little bit early stage here, so it's kind of timing good too. And then, this is my final review for the, you know, Sierra.com for that as of now, and then total score is 25.0. Uh, and then about the pain points, I put the 5.0 because it's a very, very critical, you know, the mass adaptation for the retail payment is very critical for the entire industry. And then so the payments, uh, payment point is very, very clear, you know, anyone in the world, you know, like me, like you guys who loves crypto assets and you know, wants to use the Bitcoin or anything like, you know, Ethereum, anything like, you know, crypto assets wants to do their daily life, right? So, you know, pain point is very, very clear. And about the product, 4.50. So since they provide like a multiple like crypto asset services in the application, but well integrated. So that is why I don't set the point 4.50, but why it's not the 5.0? Because you know, their exchange services still under developments, especially compared with Binance or Coinbase. Their you know, exchange service is much more well developed. That is why I set the 4.5 here. And also when you look at like, you know, my MCR token based like in prepaid card services, it's a little bit complicated for the consumer. I think, you know, so currently they have like two token economy. One is the MCR and the MCO1, and also CRO1, you know, each, you know, my MCO more focused on the consumer side and the CRO more focusing on like, you know, more merchant or, you know, and building the DEX services too. But, you know, still investor can purchase this CRO token. They, most of like retail and investor is actually retail investor. So from this perspective, it's a little bit complicated. So that is why I said in 4.50 too. Then about team 4.0 because but simply because the lack of the specialists for the exchange business payment industry they're very, very strong team but in exchange services still weak but they have to you know build the massive user active user base to get into the payment industry so the lack of specialists in exchange business is kind of their weakness right now so that is why in 4.0. And the execution power in the 3.5 is a little lower. The reason is very, very simple. So, you know, since they too much focus on the margin equation in the last two, year, two years or so, and then they finally recognize that, that they have to build in you know, I know, consumer, you know, active user base first. So from this perspective, you know, they don't have, they have not achieved the strong tractions, you know, the number of transactions at this moment, you know, as a crypto exchange or the world services yet. So that is why I said the 3.50 here, okay? Now, I would, and for the token economy, I also said the 3.50 is the same thing. You know, they have to build, you know, very, very strong exchange token economy first to get into the payment industry. So from this perspective, it's in the squad is 3.5, right? And hype cycle in you know, 4.50, it's a relatively, my compared to other like, you know, market opportunity in blockchain and aside like blockchain advertising style is much more, you know, I know, or well, smart assets, that's more huge potential in a global basis in the long term too. I know, so that is why, you know, they're, you know, you know, blockchain-based ACH you know, payment transaction a little bit close to the bubble moment, so I set the 4.50 here. So the total score is, you know, 25.0. And then, you know, my, my usually investment criteria is, you know, total score over to 25 points. So, so that is why I allocate some of my assets in crypto and uh, crypto.com. And I also, of course, to make you happy understand about the you know, potential of the crypto.com too, I think, you know, I highly recommend you to watch other my video like in you know, Binance, Kyber Network, or like in you know, Xerox Protocol, those are DEX projects because you know it's very, very you know worth to compare each other about the potential of the project itself. So that is all this time. So I also make a lot of you know other interesting video about the crypto assets and blockchain space still. So thank you for watching. Stay tuned. Bye.